you have a radio in the house. Ah. And uh, the radio is uh, playing all kind of music. It's not this or that type or this type. I'm just hearing music. And there happens to be an old piano. My mother wanted to play it, up old upright. And it was minding its own business. And at three or four years old, I did my best to annoy my family with banging on the keys. And then um, I was um, picking up the melodies. And then the radio is playing. And they're playing their lovely uh, 78 records, uh, Bing Crosby and uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford and Patty Page and all kinds of music. And of course, the indigenous music is what we call calypso. So you hear the calypso songs. I hear the um, you know popular popular tunes coming from the USA. And to me, it's just this wonderful world of sound. And I gravitated more and more to piano. And I was then one day I realized I'm entertaining the neighbors while I'm playing the, the songs at seven years old or something like that. And um, I'm having a ball doing it. So. Um, I was uh, on this sort of, I got on the bus, so to speak, of uh, sharing the joy of what happens when you play a note on a piano, you know? And jazz, I didn't even know what jazz meant. I just heard, make it up, go make it up at the piano, you know? And there were some wonderful people in my hometown that were loving the music and you know, fa family friends of different people that would play the piano. And, play their stride piano music. I heard all the old time songs that the folks liked. And uh, there were some local musicians who played the calypso, the folk music, the homemade instruments, all those songs you heard Harry Belafonte sing, that type of songs. And um, other guys who wished they were on 52nd Street with Charlie Parker. So you heard this whole range of sounds. And I was uh, totally taken in from an early age, you know. I, I just wanted to play the music, and I wanted to be a, either that or grow up to be a cowboy. <laughs>
in walks Frank Sinatra and Jilly again, and they saw me. Two days later, I got an airline ticket. So that's, that's my story, which is a, a, an exception. You know, most guys will come to New York, you know, just hoping they get a, a job. But I had a job waiting for me, and I was at Jilly's for, for uh, quite a while. I played there for three years. And I also had work at the Playboy Club. They, I played at the Playboy Club. So this is, this is the story. I can't make it any shorter than that. Yeah. <laughs> it was dazzling. It's 19 years old, and I'm in this, the pool with all these larger-than-life people, you know, real characters, and including tough guys, you know, and uh, movie stars and celebrities, and it's just a small place. And of course, it was, it was that because Sinatra would come there. So when, you know, musicians, you'd see Count Basie there, you'd see Johnny Carson, you'd see, because they wanted to be there, because the, the, the chief guy was there. And uh, I'd be playing at the piano bar, and uh, the whole idea is to keep the joint jumping, you know? And um, it was a very uh, special place that only certain people, they'd let in. You know, after with Frank Sinatra was there, they wouldn't just they lock the door. You know, but it was just, it was just a, a restaurant bistro they call it, and there was always music. Jilly Rizzo, Sinatra's friend, the brother he never had, they were close. He uh, ran this place. He had a sensitivity towards good music. He loved music, and he would always hire a combo, and they were alternating. It was right across the street from the Musicians Union on 52nd Street. So um, just a lot of excitement, you know, and I was, do, I was trying to, you know, stay out of trouble, you know, but also get into trouble too, you know, both of them things were happening. And I was, um, you know, I had to watch my P's and Q's there, and this, this very special man who people would say, oh, he's a tough guy, was a very kindly guy, Jilly Rizzo, and he looked out for me, and I remember him saying, watch out. For, you know, you know you're looking out because there were characters in there, you know. That's the other side of all of this. But the celebrities have been there, and you, you know, when you were in that environment, you, you can get a little carried away. And fortunately, I was just loving music and the musicians that would come to play there with me, some very respected musicians of New York. And I just get on the phone and call Ron Carter and Major Holly and uh, whoever, and they'd come and sit in and play with me. And a uh, very memorable event, you know. Many an occasion, Frank Sinatra would come in there and be there till 6 a.m. And I would be called upon to stay and keep playing. And, uh, you know, just a lot of booze, <laughs> a lot of booze. Well, you know, I just, you know, I had a pretty good ear. And uh, I was playing at the home, a big July the 4th party f at the, a man named Bennett Surf up in an area called Mount Kisco. So we had a little trio. I remember Bob Cranshaw playing the bass, great, great bassist, and Ray Mosca on drums. And then Jillian and Sinatra came, and friends. There was a beautiful tent out there on the lawn. And this was a publisher, Bennett Surf, very respected man in, in uh, television. And um, Jilly comes over and says, Frank wants to do a tune. I said, uh oh. <laughs> so I, uh, I it's, a, it's a blur for me, you know. But he came up and did a couple of numbers, and I, 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 I played for him. And he turned around smiling, and, you know, I, I hope I did okay. But it was uh, sort of like more than uh, average experience, you know. Do you remember the tunes that they did? Yeah. I think he sang, I get a kick out of you. I think that was one of them, on a ballad. But that was like, young guy, you know, all sorts of excitement going on. I'm not remembering details too well, mm -hmm. but I was at some parties when he wanted to, at his apartment in the city. Huh? He had an apartment, and one night I'm playing piano with Sam Butero, a saxophonist who used to play with Louis Prima. We're just jamming, you know. Good times. <laughs>